Hi, I'm Elise Dolan, the director of Other Rock Pools. And I'm Finn Co, co-artistic director of The New Colony and the playwright for Other Rock Pools. Thank you for joining us. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that here in Chicago, we occupy land that is the unceded territory of the Council of Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nation. Since our activities are shared digitally to the internet, let's also take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technology, structures, and ways of thinking we use every day. We are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art we make leave significant carbon footprints contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indig indigenous people worldwide. I invite you to join us in acknowledging all this, as well as our shared responsibility to make good of this time, and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship. After being developed using the New Colonies process and presented as part of the Uncharted Festival in 2019, Other Rock Pools was slated to receive its world premiere this past July at the Den Theater. While we could not move forward with the production, we felt that the content and message of this play are timely and relevant to our country in advance of the 2020 presidential election. That's why we've chosen to partner with Chicago Votes for this promotional reading to raise awareness and funds for a worthy cause. Chicago Votes is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization working to build a more inclusive democracy by putting power in the hands of young Chicagoans. We are all about disrupting and challenging what it means to engage in politics as a young person. And we do this by creating spaces where young people can come and be their full authentic selves and advocate for issues they care about. Chicago Votes has a number of initiatives. One of our first initiatives is the Parade to the Polls program. Through this program, we partner with colleges, universities, and Chicago public schools throughout the city to make voting a celebration. It's a celebration of voting that provides young people with the information and confidence they need to vote and further develop their civic engagement. Our second initiative is Unlock Civics. Unlock Civics works at the intersection of organizing and advocacy to ensure people impacted by the American legal system have access to their civic rights and responsibilities. This initiative encompasses our Cook County Jail Votes Program, our Core Watching Program, and then our Unlock Civics Legislative Policy. Unlock Civics is about breaking down barriers people impacted by the American legal system face to civic rights and responsibilities, and young people are a huge chunk. Thirdly, we have our Give a Shit Program. Our Give a Shit Program challenges the status quo of what it means to engage in politics. This program encompasses our Give a Shit Creative Collective members, our Shit Talks on Instagram Live, and our Happy Hours. Chicago Votes is a grassroots organization that relies super heavily on our volunteers. If you want to tune into our work and help us out, go to chicagovotes.com. You can also follow us on social media at Chicago Votes. And remember, keep giving a shit. Over the last few weeks, we've shared a number of resources from Chicago Votes and other organizations about how you can make sure your voice is heard. Be sure to check those out on our Facebook and Instagram pages. While the reading is free to view, we hope you'll make a donation to Chicago Votes. A link can be found directly below this video. Voting is the beginning, but not the ending of what you can do. Get educated, share resources, volunteer, or even run for something. Keep giving a shit and we can keep our democracy intact. Captioning is available. So be sure to hit the button below to enable. The reading comes with the following content warning. Violence, threat of sexual violence, trichotillomania, chronic pain, strong language, drug, and alcohol use. Thank you for supporting new work and voting rights, and we hope you enjoy the show. I'm Shariba Rivers. I'm playing Michelle. I'm an African-American woman, brown skin with short, buzzed hair. I'm Taylor Ray. I'm playing Catherine. I'm a dark-skinned Black woman wearing a red hoodie and glasses. I'm Emily Modaf. I'm playing Grace. I am a white non-binary human, and I'm wearing all Black. Hi, my name is Elise Karen Torres. I am reading Jay. I have olive skin, uh, long curly brown hair, and I am wearing a black top. Hi, I'm Will Cavito. I'm reading Byron. I have short brown hair, uh, white skin, and short facial hair that is not so expertly manicured into a goatee. Hi, I'm Kelsey McGrath. 
I will be reading Stage Directions. I am a white non-binary individual with brown hair and I am wearing all black today. Other Rock Pools by Finn Co. Act one, scene one. All for one and one for all. Lights up on the cabin, the interior of the main front room in a spacious old family vacation home in the woods by a lake. A door leading outside exits to a couple adjoining halls, a landing, a few pieces of furniture, but mostly a large cleared space. It's the summer of 2001. There's plenty of sunlight and a stereo in another room is playing the Pixies Bossa Nova. A knock at the door, no one answers. Hello? No one answers. The door opens and Jay enters, looking lost and carrying way too much of her personal belongings. He hello? What? What? Oh, hey, what's up? Uh, hi, um, Michelle. Uh, no, 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 I'm Grace. No, no, I mean, sure. Hi, sorry, I'm Jay, but is this Michelle's? Oh, yeah, yep, you are in the middle of the correct nowhere. Yeah, it was the the map question said to keep going, to keep it's driving. It's bad as hell, though. I mean, it's like camping, but with cable, which, thank God, could not function without a phone line, reception. Hey, you're from Seattle. How do you like it there? Yeah, how did you know that? I looked you up. I looked everyone up. It's just simpler than the whole meet and greet thing, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't know anything about you. Oh, girl, don't worry, you will. Hey, Grace, have you? Oh, hello. Catherine, this is Jay. She's the physicist. Jay, this is Catherine. She is hardwired for hardware. Hi, Jay. Do you need a hand with... Oh, no, I am... Um, actually, yeah. <laughs> you brought a lot of stuff. How long have you kept her standing there holding all of that? Michelle says time isn't real. Where is Michelle? Yeah, I thought that she was going to be here to introduce me to people. Well, I think Michelle would also say that space isn't real either. No, space is real, or actually in the way that Michelle probably means it. No, technically space isn't real. Space has real qualities, but what's real I'm is- I'm sure she'll be right back. Uh, why don't we get you settled in the meantime? You know, Grace is through there, and I kind of took over that room with parts and pieces, but there's a free room by the back door, or rooms upstairs with Michelle and me. Oh, um, I'll, I have a lot of stuff, so I'll just take the downstairs room. Smart. There's only one bathroom upstairs. <laughs> Is this, did you bring board games? Hell yeah. <laughs> and are these choose your own adventures? I'm just gonna say it, I like this girl. Uh, that's a great question. I know that we're all here to work, but I mean, it's important to unwind, right? We don't wanna burn out, especially not, I wouldn't do that to Michelle and I didn't know what you all would be like. So I brought communal social activities in case you were, in case this, that was the consensus. And then the books were for if this is more of a non-social group. Oh, my heart. <laughs> hey, no judgment here. Wait till you see what the rest of us brought. <laughs> You're gonna fit right in. Yeah, come with me. Your room is just through here. Yeah, I would help, but my back, it's being kind of wonky and also I really don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the kitchen's just through there. This place is really nice. Yeah, it's great. I never seem to remember to take a vacation, so being in nature is big for me. How much more is there? A normal amount? Uh, what? Grace enters eating a sandwich, picks up the board game that Catherine set down and exits, reading the back of the box. Catherine and Jay re-enter, holding the last of Jay's stuff. Hey, um... Catherine. Uh, no, I remember. Um, can I ask you something? Of course. What are we, what are we doing here? Sorry? The project, Michelle's work, do you know what it is? No, I don't. Oh. I've known Michelle a long time. We might not be close friends, but we're old friends. And she was pretty cagey about it with me. So, I'm sorry, can I ask you another question? You can ask me anything. Why did you say yes? Why do you say yes? Well, I, I mean, she's one of the greatest minds of our times. 
She's crazy smart and fearless. She just goes out and she finds the answers to the questions she has, even if they're not the answers that she wants. And I think that whatever the question she wants to ask, whatever the problem she wants to solve, to be a part of that would be just amazing. So how about you? She's a good person and the best at what she does. I'd do anything for her. Oh. What? No, that's just like a way better answer. Grace enters with the board game box under her arm, reading the rules and finishing her sandwich. Oh, hey, fearless leader. Hello. I think that's Jay's car parked out front. Uh, the Pisces and I have met. Oh, grand. She is here. How is she? I can see why you picked her. I <laughs> think you'll get along all right. Ooh, reply hazy. Try again later. <laughs> well, as long as... Oh! Jay, there you are. Prof uh, Michelle, hi. Yes, I am. Um, I'm so sorry if I kept you waiting. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, that's the last show. Oh, you're back. Good. Ah, uh, Catherine, Grand. Well, we're all here then. Grand, I suppose we should have our first official team meeting. Wow. Uh, oh, uh, and, unless, does anyone need anything before we start, Jay? No, I'm good. You don't need to freshen up or? <laughs> Wonderful. Very good. You've all been admirably patient, but I'm sure you all have questions, and it's time I answered them. So... A drink of water. Does anyone need water before we... All set. Michelle? Forgive me. This is a big moment. So... Let me start by asking, do you ever think about how we got where we are today and what you change about the world around you? Those moments or events where if you could just go back and fix it, everything would have turned out better. Yeah, sure. Of course. And does anyone else get the feeling that with our country, our planet, the state of science, our entire, that we're approaching some sort of giant freaking crisis? Yes. Do you, do we all feel that? Like we're getting close to, or have maybe already passed a point of no return. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. Uh, yes, um, I've, well, since the election, especially, I feel like things are sort of out of control and not just my control, but any control. And there's this whole machine that used to be invisible and now I can see it breaking down. Yeah. I mean, I thought it couldn't get any worse than Reagan, but man, if we were screwed before, now it's like 3D surround sound, full on smell of vision When I watch the news after the whole Florida recount and everything, I just, this weird part of my mind hurt the whole day after. And I realized it was the part of my brain that tries to wake you up from a bad dream, only it couldn't, obviously. Amen to that. I've always hoped for the best. But now I worry that my faith in humanity may have been a touch misplaced. Things seem to have gone very wrong. And it's starting to look like we can't just cross our fingers and hope things get better. I believe that we may need to take matters into our own hands. How? This is going to sound like a joke or crazy, but it's neither. I brought the four of us together because... This timeline is awful, so we're going to build a machine to get the hell out of it. Oh, that is so cool! <laughs> Act 1, Scene 2, Relitigating the Primary. Time passes. They are now sprawled out with some diagrams lying scattered around them, a wine bottle and a couple of juice glasses by Grace. The music is off. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, do we need to collide anything? When you said bring everything you'd need to build a particle accelerator, I took it as a joke, but... No, physically the device will be quite small. There are a couple of specialized instruments that you'll have to work with, but this shouldn't be too big or complicated. It 
can't be really with just the four of us. No tunnels, no bombardment, no lasers. Damn. Just a bare bones proof of concept. Just a dial to find a better station. Grace uncorks the bottle of wine. I have a question. She pours wine into a cup, offers it to Michelle, who declines, which causes Jay to decline it as well. Catherine takes it. This is all for real, right? What do you mean? Yes. I mean... <sighs> she pours herself a cup. What do I mean? I mean that I can do what you're asking. Program the arrays to run in sequence, build the algos that crunch the big numbers, but this is all real? It checks out because I really want it to. Yeah, it, uh, sorry, excuse me, but this math, it's incredible, but it checks out. And what Michelle showed us, if we build that thing, it'll do, yeah, it'll work. Most of my adult life has been spent solving this equation. All of the work I've done throughout my career has been circling around the edges of this. And it's finally, as you say, real. I wasn't sure it ever would be, but it is. All it needs now is you. Awesome. I'm super in. Oh, me too, of course. Okay, so I was thinking of the unentangling, de-entangling of the Eddington strands. Do we want to somehow isolate them first? Again, then... we'll start on all that tomorrow. For now, just let it sink in. I know you're excited, Jay, but we should all take the evening to process the enormity of the undertaking we have before us. Things aren't normal anymore, and I'm not sure they ever should be again. I certainly don't trust this work in anyone else's hands, least of all our governments. Our biggest resource by far is us. Our knowledge, our skills, our drive, our flexibility, our independence. It's going to be a hard summer, and we've got to make the most of it. Yeah, I, yeah. So where are we going? Or when, I guess, what timeline? I, <laughs> you know, to be honest, I'm not sure yet. There are so many things to consider. Well, you said that the Eddington strands are separated by probability, right? That the only distance that matters for our calculations is how unlikely or likely an event Yay. is. And no, 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 no. This is socializing. And I'm also going to be so super quick. So, yeah. So uh, that makes me think that we're surrounded by very similar, I mean, like practically indistinguishable timelines. Like worlds where the only difference that instead of a Milky Way today, I bought a Four Musketeers. So then we'd have to look further, bigger. So then what are the turning points we want to reverse? It's kind of like uh, reading a choose your own adventure and figuring out which page has the choice that, you, that would have changed everything, right? What direction do we want to go in? You expect me to have a ranked list of what's most wrong with the world? Because I do actually have a list like that. How about you, Jay? Oh, well, let's start with an easy one. We all want timelines where Gore won. Uh, or the one where Nader won. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, why not? Well, I just don't think that there are a lot of timelines like that. You just said we need to go big or go home. Why settle for a cardboard cutout sellout? There are actual serious issues that imperil our freaking world. Why wouldn't we aim for a world where the right guy actually won? This is a very interesting discussion, but please tell me that you didn't actually vote for Ralph Nader. Not that it's any of your business, but no, I didn't. Good. I didn't vote for anyone. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Sorry, I wasn't excited to vote in an election between George Bush's dumber sequel and blowjob Clinton's right-hand mannequin. Oh, you really think that voting is about being excited? Catherine, how about you? Oh, uh, well, uh, I don't know. I still need some time to- I, I want you all to find the lives you could have had. What's the first thing that comes to mind? It doesn't have to be political or it can be anything. Well, uh, okay, so when we were kids, my little sister Louise used to do this impression of our dad 
she was seriously hysterical. She'd dangle her fingers in front of her ears like sideburns and she'd say, one second's mistake which was like his catchphrase. If a cup tipped over, he'd say, one second's mistake. If your ship hits an iceberg, it's one second's mistake. So she would, you know, <laughs> and no matter what, it would always make me laugh. Uh, when we lost her, I was 12. We were at the lake, we went swimming, drowning. Doesn't look like it does in the movies. I'd want to go to a timeline where we stayed home that day. Transition. Act one, scene three, and they were roommates. A few days later, lights up on Grace reading Animorphs book three, The Encounter, while Ani DeFranco's dilate plays over the sounds of a TV. Catherine enters and crosses, stops, sees Grace in all her stimuli and stares for a moment, then rolls her eyes and exits. After a moment, she re-enters, carrying the first pieces of the machine, which she puts down. She stares at Grace again. Eventually, Grace feels Catherine's gaze and looks up. She grins. Catherine practices serenity and exits in a different direction. Grace goes back to her book. Catherine re-enters with a couple of tools and a widget. Catherine tightens some random bolts on the widget and affixes some wires to it. She connects the widget to a part of the machine, but one bolt gives her trouble. She twists too hard and hurts her hand and drops her wrench. Ah, did you say something? I just hurt my ear. Do you need to be doing all of this out here? Oh, uh, no. I could read in my bedroom. Right. But the TV's out here. It's my only vice. So are you reading or watching? I'm using the full range of my abilities. I'm very efficient that way. What are you even reading? A book that's going to outsell the Bible. Isn't that a kid's book? Yeah. Adults can read kids' books. It's the other way around that doesn't work. Can you just forget it? Do you need a Band-Aid or anything? No, thank you. Are you sh No trouble. I'm fine. I just want to get this module plugged in. Here, here, let me get the first aid kit. I don't need, I don't need a Band-Aid. What I need is some order, some peace and quiet. Okay. Okay. Geez, I get it. You're busy. I'll be busy too. You know, I just can't start my project yet. Yes, I know because you need me to build the thing so you can program the things. So please turn off either the music or the TV and let me build the thing so you can program it. Okay, fine. Jesus, dude, I feel like I'm back in college. Yeah, me too, dude. Grace harumps and turn off the TV and then the stereo then exits. Catherine breathes in the quiet and goes to re-engage with the widget. Hey, we're cool, right? This is just banter. Grace. Okay, God. And hurry up and finish that stupid book. Jay lent me the first two and I'm almost done with the Rachel one. Okay, fine. Fine then. Catherine goes back to work in the silence. She connects the widget and connects pieces of the machine to one another. She's got one last piece that's being difficult and she almost has it when there's a knock on the door. She growls and ignores it. Knock again. She ignores it. She almost has it, almost has it. Another loud series of knocks. She drops the piece. Holy God, what now? Hello? Who is it? Uh, Byron? What? Catherine goes to the door and opens it to find Byron standing there holding bags of takeout. Hi. Hi, I'm Byron. I got your delivery here, meatball sub, Caesar salad with blackened chicken, Greek salad, roast beef on pumpernickel. Is Michelle around? Michelle ordered lunch? No, someone named Grace did, but I usually bring stuff to Michelle when I come here. Can I put this stuff down? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, just put it on the... Thanks. Wow. You building something? Yes. S sorry, aren't you the Chinese delivery guy? I mean, the delivery guy from the Chinese place. You brought us food a few nights back. <laughs> yes, I am. I actually drive for a bunch of different places. It's not that big a town, and there's not really a ton of competition, so it's pretty much just me. And I'm definitely the only one who's gonna drive all the way up the mountain, so 
Hi, are you Grace? What? Oh, no, I'm Catherine. Why am I telling you? Grace! What? Your food is here. I didn't order any food. What? I didn't order any food. You didn't order Italian-ish food? <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I forgot, I'll be right out. I'm in the bathroom. Cool. <clears throat> She'll be right out and she can pay you. I'm gonna get back to you. Oh, sure, sure. Catherine goes to work on the machine. So what are you building? It's a prototype. We're scientists. We're exploring a physics theory, doing math. This is math? They do the math. I build the calculator. She picks up a piece of the machine. Very cool. I'm kind of an entrepreneurial type myself, you know? I've got this uh, idea since... Like I'm the delivery driver for a bunch of different restaurants. Maybe I could make a website where you can call me or IM me and just tell me anything you want. Even if it's from different restaurants or even like the grocery store or a fries or the pet shop or whatever. And I just pick it all up on one trip and bring it to you all at once. I'm still planning it all out, but I've already drawn a lot of logos. Make that dot com money, you know? Sure. Listen, uh... Byron. Byron, yeah. I'm sure Grace will be out in a minute. Would you mind if I worked on this? Oh, totally. Work away. Catherine tries to fit the piece to the machine. Anyway, the website would just be me, but like anyone who wanted, anybody who wanted to do it could do it part time, you know? See if they, if they wanted to. Byron, or... I just, would you mind if we didn't talk? Because I get these headaches. I'm getting one now. Oh, Man, yeah, sorry. <laughs> what kind of headaches? Just, I get headaches a lot. I'm not sure what triggers them. And sometimes when I get them, my joints hurt too. My knees, my knuckles. Sometimes it's so bad I can't get out of bed. I got fired one time because of these whatevers laid me out and I missed work, which seems illegal. But I guess it doesn't matter when you're in my teeth. Anyway, I don't know what causes them, so I try to get work done while I can because I never know when I'm gonna lose a day, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I know how that feels. You do? Yeah, I uh, skateboard pretty regularly, Pro mm, semi-professionally. Uh, it can be hard on the body. I wipe out a lot. Yep, <clears throat> mm -hmm. same thing, totally the same. Grace! Yeah, geez, I'm here. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey. I'm Byron. You brought us those dumplings. Pot stickers. Delicious. Yeah. I was just telling... Uh-huh. Hey, Byron. Uh, yeah? Did you ever play the video game Parappa the Rapper, Byron? All the time. And is that your Jeep with no doors parked out there? <laughs> yeah. I call it the Byron Mobile. Cool. So you definitely sell drugs then. Grace. Oh, totally. What kind? Byron. What? Uh, you can what? Why are you? You cannot do this here. This is not her house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Just shh. It's fine. Okay, relax. This isn't a drug deal. This isn't a drug deal in your dear friend's childhood home. No crossed lines, no sullied memories. This is a transaction of delicious, authentic, Italian inspired food for hard earned US currency. Oh, no, we're square. And now, potato. as I leave behind some of that delicious food for my cranky but well meaning colleague, I am merely, merely going to step out to this enterprising business person's mobile office to uh, buy some drugs because I'm a goddamn adult and I don't need to explain myself to you. I am not your mom. Yeah, my mom rules. Relax, Thryn. Michelle won't care. We're building a freaking time machine. I don't think she's going to get all dare on the horn over a teensy toke. Uh, plus, I could hook you up, too, if you wanted something to manage the pain. Yeah, you, you want some chronic for your chronic? What? What? How do you know about my... Come on, I know everybody's everything. Like my goddamn medical records? Whoa, how do you know that stuff? You ever see the movie Hackers? None of that's real. Hackers can't actually do any of that stuff. Except for me, I can do all of it. 
So, so what do you know about me? I know that you own a lot of big dog t-shirts. That's amazing. How did you hack that? I, I infiltrated the databases of the big dog corporation, Byron. That's what I did. Grace, I cannot believe you would just disregard all of our privacy just to- Well, I can't believe you think I drop everything and slough off to some random woodland shack with a bunch of people I've never met and not do some digging and make sure I wasn't walking into a George Romero movie. Look, I'm sorry, okay? It's not like I could unfind out about it and, and I haven't told anyone else. Whereas you clearly don't mind telling our delivery driver slash drug dealer, so- I won't mention it to the others, okay? Hey, hey, come on. What can I do to make this right by you? Whatever, just get Byron out of here. I need to get this done. Uh-huh. Hey, let's go, dude. Give her some space, yeah? Come on, I, I wanna sample your wares. Hey, I'm sorry. I, I just finished book three. It's in the bathroom. You can read it. If I you need to get this done. Yeah. Yo, Byron. Catherine takes a moment to collect herself, regulates her breathing. She flinches as a twinge of pain runs through her hip. She masters herself and picks up a tool again, working through the pain. What was difficult was throwing out all of the assumptions I'd formed based off of Albert's findings. It's good math, but for our purposes, quarter ions are a dead end. That's wild, but I kind of had a hunch. The Albers theorems are almost too clean. They presuppose a limit on real and complex numbers, but they leave out- Oh, Kath. Oh, I apologize. I didn't know you were working in here. Oh, please don't worry. Your work is important. We were being so loud. You don't need us distracting you. No, please. I really don't mind the company. What are you two talking about? Uh, octanions and how to plot coordinates in the fourth through eighth dimensions. Uh huh. But that's like super boring anyway, probably. Um, what are you working on? I promise it's not boring. Heavy, maybe, but not. I mean, I'm just out here farting around with my tools and gear and. <laughs> no, please. This is like my dream. I wish I could take what's in my head and like make it happen, have it exist in my hands. So, what are you working on? Well, uh, so Michelle, you said that we have to be able to isolate the interior field from its surrounding space time. Yeah, so there's nothing I know of that does that, but I can still use the tools I do have to create the conditions where it's possible. Like uh, maybe the Cayuta rods for isolating gluons and dynamic patterns to, well, anyway, I didn't invent these building blocks, but I can totally probably Lego them together to achieve what Michelle says we need, or at least fail better and better until it's indistinguishable from success. What? That's just maybe the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's just how like Michelle was saying about her research, inductive reasoning, when you don't have all of the facts, so you have to start with a possible solution and work backwards. I love that, that's so smart. Oh, hey. <laughs> can't just say things like that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You're going to give me a big head. Although I could get used to being called a genius. Well, did I call you a genius? I didn't say that you were a genius. Ouch. <laughs> Fair enough. You totally are, though. Hey, you hear that, Shell? She's right. <laughs> oh, wish no. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay so far? Anything you're missing? Any complications that you foresee? No, no, I can build the damn thing. Though after that, all I can say is that Grace better be as good as you say she is because the techno witchcraft it's going to take, that's really going to be something. She's up to it. I did have a kind of unrelated question, though. What's on your mind? Michelle uh, and Grace sit. I was thinking about which timeline we wanted to go to and like, I get it, we might not all agree on which one, but that got me wondering, what about us, the other us? I mean, the other versions of us and the other timelines. Ah. Oh gosh. Are we only supposed to go to timelines where, I mean, should we even plan to stay or are we going to 
I don't know, browse, scout places out. And it's like college applications, but so much worse. And okay, I know it sounds dumb, but so do we have to avoid the other versions of ourselves in order to prevent like no. a, a paradox or, it, right, that's probably not even a no, real- No, 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 yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> Nothing we're going to do will cause a paradox like that. Our dimension is safe. I really want to meet the other me's. You do? Yeah, you don't? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not the easiest person to be around and my mind will already be pretty much <laughs> by the whole being the first ever timeline hoppers thing. So it would suck if on top of that, it turns out I'm a huge bitch and no fun to be around. But you're not, I promise. Maybe there's a world in which you're not amazing, but I think that you're um, not a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, high praise, Kath. Remember to not get a big head. Thank you for saying so. I mean it. So why are you excited to meet the other yous? Oh, um, well, what you said made a lot of sense. But? Well, there's just a lot of things that that I've been through or that I've thought about or things about me. It would be nice, will be nice to know that I'm not alone, to know that there are other me's who know exactly what it's like and to talk to me about it. I'm sorry, that sounds hey, so dumb, actually. You apologize a lot, which is fine, but you don't have to do that with me or anyone else here, okay? How about you? You're both so articulate. These questions have bounced around my head for decades, but I've never gotten to talk to anyone about them. What are the ethics of, was it timeline hopping? <laughs> Flippant, but fitting. What are the ethics of being a hopper? Is it wrong to replace me or do I have as much of a right to be there as she does? There must be other me's who crack the code. What are their answers to these quantum quandaries? I don't know. There's so much I don't know. So much that I won't ever look at me <laughs> getting lost in the weeds as usual. Is that lunch I smell? Uh, yeah, Grace got... Oh, mm -hmm. grand. She did call it in. I wasn't certain what either of you wanted. So I told her to get an assortment. You three can hash out who gets what. But that meatball sub and I have a bright, if short, future ahead of us. Will you two excuse me? There's some correspondence I want to review while I eat. Do you need any help? I'm not very- No, no, no. Just comparing notes with some recent journals. Let's go eat, take a break. We'll tackle the octonion differentials this afternoon. Are you- okay? I'm serious. Go, go eat. Act one, scene four, Bear to the future. Time passes, lights up on Byron, slouched on the couch and watching the TV. The machine has progressed. Its shape begins to solidify. Jay enters in a towel with another towel over her hair, does a double take when she sees Byron, stifles a yelp and scrambles back off stage. Byron chuckles at the TV. Eventually, Jay re-enters wearing some hastily thrown on clothing. Her hair is still in its towel. Uh, hi? Hi there. I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, I'm Byron. Cool. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm, I'm just watching Back to the Future. Grace wanted me to bring over my copy. Oh, okay. Are you and Grace? Hmm? Uh, never mind. <laughs> hey, you know this movie's garbage, right? Yeah, but you can see all the pieces are there for a really good movie. Um, she, defend <laughs> she comes and sits next to him. Um, defend that thesis. Well, like, I get why it was a flop, but the basic idea is real cool. And there's some super good acting. Point. And Christopher Lloyd is... Totally perfect. This is such a good role for him. Agreed. And Crispin Glover and Leah Thompson. Really, everyone except... Marty. Yeah. Man, 
I wish they could have found someone other than Eric Stoltz. He just... Kills all the joy. Exactly. It's just not the right role for him. Like, I get it. He's super good or whatever. The Crucible? Right. So good. And he's so right for it. But that's, like, his thing. Like, he does serious movies. But this story needed someone more fun. Yeah. I still like it, though. Yeah. I get that. They watched the movie. Hey, you know what else would fix this movie? What? Being freaking high. You want to smoke? Yes, please. <clears throat> so you guys are building a time machine? Well, it's a device to disobserve our own quantum state, identify and align with a different quantum state, and then re-enter space-time in that new state. Cool, cool. So is that a time machine? No, but I don't really have the words yet to more accurately describe it. It's a timeline machine. That seems like a little bit of a quibble. Welcome to physics. So this is like summer camp for science chicks. We're science women. Uh, my bad. Yeah, you got a, a lighter or? No, oh, I just know you're not lighting a bowl up in here. Yeah, <laughs> Byron, not cool. I told you to keep it outside, you degenerate. Oh, he isn't. He wasn't really hurting anyone. I don't care. Byron is a distraction, and he brings nothing but chaos into this house, which is also, just as a reminder, our workplace. I am a wild card. Ew, don't. Don't call yourself that. It's out, Byron. Don't you want to know why I'm here? Is it to sell drugs? Don't you want to know why else? Byron. I'm here? Okay, okay. I brought you guys gifts, many gifts. I am the Kris Kringle of Christmas in July. <clears throat> Chickity, check it out. I got these packages that came from the post office that they had for you from the uh, Berkeley lab. Oh, holy crap, really? And I picked up 10 spools of Cat6 cable from Radio Shack, the New York Tribs from the last week for Michelle, and I did a price club trip for Fruit Leathers, 2% milk, French Toast Crunch, Dr. Pepper, white bird markers, and paper towels. It's all on your porch. That is a very weird bunch of things that we did actually need to get. Yeah. Grace gave me a list. And uh, her press club card. Here's that back, by the way. Along with some stuff that sh she wanted me to get. He places a plastic card and some baggies on the table. And uh, there's some for you, too. Just... If you want it, as a peace offering. It's a strain that's mega good for headaches and nausea. Byron, that's... Thank you. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. You didn't have to. Ah, no, it's no big deal. Tourist season's getting off to a pretty slow start, so you guys are, like, my biggest clients. And uh, it's a nice drive. No bears. I'm sorry, what was that last part? No bears. Why would there be bears? I don't know. It's the woods. It's pretty far from town. So how do you know that there aren't bears? Wait, are there? I have no... What? Oh, you're here. What are we all doing? I honestly don't know anymore. Something about bears. So something what about bears? Hey, bad future. I love, 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 love this movie. You get my stuff? Yeah, I, uh... Well, you then hit the damn road. We got shit to do. Oh, I thought maybe... I'd yeah, I bet you did. One. But instead, you're going to make, like, the Prince a pop and beat it. She hustles him up off the couch and out the door. Up! Up! Come on, slacker. Let's get a mosey on. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I'll... Okay, um... thanks. Bye. Good luck with the bears. Hey, wait, wait, what about bears? Grace locks the door. Is there coffee? Are you sleeping with him? I have not, nor have I ruled it out either. Kind of slim pickings around here. Unbelievable. 
I can't wait to find out why you think you get to have an opinion on this subject. We're here to work and we have so much to do and enough interpersonal issues as it is. And we do not need the local pizza dude traipsing in and out like it's a goddamn clubhouse. He really is chaos. Damn it, I do not want to be that girl. But are you jealous? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, don't flatter yourself. I can guarantee you that I will never be jealous of Byron. I uh, didn't mean jealous of Byron. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. No, you're not. You're a smart woman. Don't play dumb. Look, Thryn, I, I don't- What, you didn't dig up that I'm gay? How'd you miss that one? I thought you knew everyone's everything. I didn't want Terrific. to- Terrific. Swell. Look. Excuse me for existing. All I did was place a freaking grocery order. I didn't invite him to play house. And if you want to talk about interpersonal issues, maybe we can schedule some time on the whiteboard to discuss how you leave your work with all its pointy edges all over every room of the entire house. Or why I had to be the one to get us more supplies in the first place. And Jesus Christ, on a crispity, crunchity cracker, could you please... Stop blaming me for the things that you tell people. I am not spilling your secrets, hon. You're just not as private of a person as you think you are. <sighs> Good morning. Is there coffee? No, it feels as though there is not coffee. I will make some coffee. Did I hear Byron's voice? Um, yes. Where'd he run off to? He, he was chaos. <laughs> yes, he usually is. I like him though. What? What? Catherine whirls off wincing and rubbing a spot on her hip as she goes. Jay rises to follow, but Grace stops her. Let her have some space. But she's, she'll be fine. She just needs to blow off some steam. Oh. What is it? I just, I want her to be okay. I know. You are all right. Anybody ever tell you that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're great. I know. How's your, have you started your part of the project yet? Yeah, th this phase is still a lot of uh, listening to death metal while I mash the keys and then taking an Adderall and combing out the spaghetti code. Kath has what she needs from me to finish plugging in all her input outputs, but I've got some prelim daemons ready to install, but we are still not in crunch time proper for me. Sure. I don't know what some of those words were, but I sympathize with the tone of your voice. And that's why you're my favorite. It kind of still doesn't feel real, you know? Like, I don't, I don't mean I'm not taking it seriously. I'm busting my ass. But as far as, like, my subconscious or whatever goes, it's just another project. Just another run. My reptile brain can't come to grips with the bigness of it all. Maybe when I really get going, it'll hit me. I bet it will. You'll crunch the shit out of that spaghetti. You're going to crunch it all up. The code, the Adderall... Cyber, ASL, oh, I know the words. <laughs> Bandwidth, mirror, sunglasses, bleep, blorp. Wow, that is amazing. You totally know the words. Yeah, I'm a hackster. I uh, take expensive future drugs through my robo eyeballs. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, I was about to smoke with Byron when Catherine walked in, but please don't ever tell her. Yo, I would never narc on a fellow hackster. They sit and watch the movie. I love this movie. Even though it sucks. I don't, I don't like movies because they're good. I like them because I like them. Any overlap is sheer coincidence. Hmm. Yeah, I, I have no guilty pleasures because I will never feel guilty about feeling pleasure. Oh, wow. Okay. So Catherine is like, um, she's into women. Yeah, dude. 
once again, heterosexuality, my only vice, proves to be a prison of the heart and mind. Because Catherine's, like, super cute, right? <laughs> Michelle! Act one, scene five. What a night. Transition. Time passes. Lights up on Catherine, setting up chairs and a whiteboard. After a moment, Jay bursts in, a little frantic, carrying a stack of staple papers. Hey there. Hey! Jay smiles, but paces nervously. She exits, re-enters immediately, fidgeting. I'm sorry, do you need any help with- no, any... I'm all done, we're set up for- No, don't pick that up, it's Michelle's, and she said she'd get all her stuff tidied. Well, yeah, but there's- Also, I don't know if that's like her filing system, and if we try to clean it, and it'll interrupt her genius or whatever. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't sleep very well. Oh my gosh. Was it a flare-up? Yeah. It's gone now, though. I'm sorry. I didn't even notice it. Do we need to reschedule? Honestly, don't worry about it. I just need to get to bed earlier tonight. Plus, you took out all the trash cans for me. That was a huge help. Thank you. Sure. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just, I, um, I really need to use the bathroom and Grace is in the upstairs one. Oh, well, I think the downstairs is free. Yeah, but the downstairs one doesn't have a mirror. Why do you need a mirror? A normal reason? Do you, Jay, are you sure you're- It's fine, it's weird or, nope, it's, uh, Fine, please forget it. Please, just forget about it. Hey, you don't need to keep anything from me. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to. There's, I have like a little mirror in my room. If No, that's... oh my God, oh my God. No, I really, I already made this weird and now you're being like so nice, but like we have to start this meeting and there's this, this it's, it's just a thing that I have and it's not even a big deal. Okay, it's a big deal to me, but it's like super weird. Whoa, and I... whoa, Jay, it's okay. Just tell me what. I what have a hair. Oh. Uh, sure. Yeah. God, those are the worst. No, it's different for me. I don't know why, but I have to get it. Like, it doesn't hurt, but it almost aches not to get it. And the longer I can't get it, the more that it aches. And the more my hands tremble and I need a mirror so I can get it out because I need it to be out. Once I know that it's there, it feels like it's a splinter. And I know that this sounds totally like yellow wallpaper, like I'm a crazy person. And I don't want to act like a crazy person in front of you or anyone else. But like, this is this little thing that I just have to do. And normally I just get one and then I just go somewhere with a mirror and I deal with it, but I couldn't find my tweezers. And then Grace was in the bathroom and there was this mirror and the downstairs is gone because Byron said that he could swap it out for a better one, whatever that means. And everyone's going to see me being like this do you want me to get it for you? Oh my God, no. Please? Yeah, give me the... Jay thrusts the tweezers at her. Catherine takes them, then calmly approaches Jay, who fidgets miserably. Where? It's, um... Oh, I see it. I... Damn it. Hang on. You don't, um... Hang on. You're sh whoa, whoa, just focus on my voice, okay? It's okay, you're okay. There we go, you're okay, you're okay. I ha! got it. <laughs> Son of a hey, bitch. Hey, I got it, hey. I'm just so embarrassed. Hey. I don't get it. I don't get why my brain does that and you just had to like pull this gross thing out of me and I'm all shaky and I might cry which is ridiculous but you must think that I'm a train wreck like I you have like real problems actual problems and Michelle's about to walk in here and she's about to see me having this stupid meltdown because I can't control myself because of a tiny stupid hey, freaking hey. hair hey what can I give you a hug oh no please I'm sorry I'm just too embarrassed. I really like your hugs, but if you hug me right now, I might actually die. Okay. How about just my hands? Would you take my hands? Why? Would you, please? Jay does. See that scar? Mm-hmm. Woodshop. 
I got careless and bumped my hip into a table, swung my hand out and hit a, anyway. It was super gross and it hurt like a bitch. When I look at it, I can almost smell the iodine from, hey, where are you? I'm here. Where are you? I'm here. Where are you? I'm here. Good. Me too. I can time travel without a machine, you know. Sometimes my memories, my regrets, they're so vivid and they wash over me so strong. And sometimes I feel like I can hold on to the present. It's this like flimsiest thing in the world. And if I don't find something to anchor me to the here and now, I'll be swept away, lost in the past forever. Anyway, do you think the scar makes my hand look weird? I, three night. No, I think your hands are perfect. God, I know it's dumb to do my nails when I'm wrenching and soldering all day, but I was thinking of painting them anyway. You know, what color do you think I should? Silver. Oh yeah? Why silver? I just always think of metal in your hands. You're always, the way you grip things and you move them and you kind of flip and twirl and spin your tools a lot, pencils, the TV remote, your spoons, they're always moving, shiny. Yeah. Does it, does that help to do that? Or does it make it worse? She moves to let go of Catherine's hands, but Catherine patiently holds on. The pain. I don't know but I don't know if someday it'll ever stop me from working, from using my hands. So while I've got them, I'm gonna use them, you know? Yeah. It's not my fault that pizza was pretty old, but Little Caesars is my only vice. <laughs> oh, Michelle's not here. Never mind. What are we talking about? Jay I... Jeff, but Catherine lifts their clasped hands to show grace. I'm thinking of painting my nails. Jay says silver, what do you think? Sparkly purple. Mm, dark or bright? Are you kidding me? Dark, obviously. Look at you, you're like 21.15 gigawatts of electric plot. Are we ready to, oh, good. Thank you for your patience, ladies. It's cool. We were just talking about nail polish for John Hughes Ripley over here. Really? Sometimes I like to shake things up. We don't all have to be work all the time. Hey, you're <laughs> Famous catchphrase. Sure. I think a gray would suit you. Something metallic. But let's get to it, shall we? Catherine lets go of Jay's hand and passes around notepads. They all sit. Okay, old business. We've got... Grace, did you write this? I don't know. It appears to be unattributed. The author hasn't left any clues as to their identity. Cool. It's just that everything else on the board is in my handwriting and this item isn't. And I was just wondering. Well, yeah, yeah, it beats me, but you know, it's on the board. We should probably discuss it, right? You know what? Sure. Sure. Let's get it out of the way. Let's call the machine the warp vortex. Well, let's not. But uh, what are some other suggestions? How about the what if machine? Okay. What? Why are we just leapfrogging past warp vortex. I think it evokes like cool hyperspace sounds and it's two words, which is great. Although we could call it the warp vortex drive because three is good also. Also, if you say it in Russian accent, it's vortex. All in favor of warp vortex. Great, anyone else? I kind of like the Octavia. Hmm. All in favor of the Octavia. What, you're not going to make her explain her idea? No one made you explain yours. You just decided to. Plus, I like the name Octavia. All in favor? Amazing. Ah, it's unanimous. Moving on. Actual old stuff. The trip circuits. Uh, I actually don't need those anymore since we're going with the Ono Sendai boards now. Sigma 5 notation. Remind me what this is. 
Uh, no, that's sorted. We're all good. Okay. Uh, grab a grab a tick decay. No update. Okay, underlining for next time then. Next up, how are we on toilet paper? Upstairs is good? I would double check upstairs, actually. Downstairs is fine. For now. Weirdly ominous. Groceries, what are we out of? We're already halfway through the Hot Pockets. Already? Actually, we're totally out of the pepperoni ones. No one seems to have touched the chicken and broccoli ones. Byron will eat those. Let's just get pepperoni from now on. New business. I've got strand drift, prime factorizations, gray status, phase six, foreign metal objects, and clean room. I'll knock out that last one real quick. Uh, we pulled up the carpet in part of the spare room upstairs. That's so Grace doesn't have to worry about any static discharge, which is a real thing, so don't look at her funny over it. Or for any other reason, really. Mm. Uh, strand drift. Jay, what have you got? Great. So here is he what hands out stapled papers is what I've got on the intervals between the Eddington strands and the those that are adjacent to our timeline. Uh, the are we calling it antennae? The dish? The dish. Uh, the Octavia's dish is now passively scanning pretty much constantly, except for a couple of minutes on Sunday when I plugged in too many appliances, but that's fixed now. And so anyway, Michelle wanted me to track them and graph them so that we can start plotting out the coordinates of the other strands in Q space. So this is the raw data for one of those strands, chronological vertically, and the column third from the right is the, uh, what I'm calling the drift, which is the total additive variance between the intervals. Uh, 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 non-additive. Oh yeah, sorry, non-additive very, no. Wait, no, I additive. I did mean additive. Uh, <laughs> Jay, that's not right. The intervals between when a strand is in line and when it returns. To the same coordinate, yes, but that's what the column. Is. No, that, that can't be the additive interval. It's completely, give me that. That's, that's not, look, this is, this is wrong. This is all, which, which column did you say it was? Third from, from the, the left, right. right. Oh, third from the, I'm so sorry, Jay. I really am. I was looking at the wrong column. <laughs> It's fine. I should have cleaned up the... Oh, no, 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 no. That was all me. I must have misheard what you... Your math is... It's all correct. And this <laughs> this data, it makes perfect sense. It's just been a long day. I... <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. I made everything a bit weird, didn't I? <laughs> Apologies. <clears throat> would um, Would anyone mind if we called it a tad early and picked up again tomorrow? I've clearly overextended myself a bit, and I, I'm going to go rest. Sure, we can, I mean, we've still got, but yes, let's just punt the rest of that until. Jay, will you keep compiling the scan data on this? I want to make sure we factor it in as we plot our, our destination. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Catherine, Grace, thank you both as always. I will see you all tomorrow. Of course, yeah. Grant, get some rest, everyone. Yeah. What the hell? That was weird. I thought I had totally blown it. Oh my God, I was about to cry. I, I, from the sidelines, let, let me tell you, that was category five bonkers. I don't know why she got so harsh like that. <sighs> I just need to... Oh, I need a second. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're clearly done with work for the night. <clears throat> Esteemed colleague, I believe this calls for an herbal remedy. What say you? Pack that pipe, Gracie. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Catherine and Grace sit on the couch. Grace plops on the floor next to it and fishes around in the many pockets of her cargo pants for her drug objects. I was just going to lock myself in the bathroom and hyperventilate into a paper bag, but this is way better. Michelle's never like that. She must be really pushing herself. And we're not. I know, I know. 
she just has to keep track of so many things. All the pieces of the different work we all do, it has to fit inside that puzzle in her head. I guess so. Shoot, I don't know where my stuff is. I'll grab mine. Aren't cargo pants amazing? There's so many different places for your things to get lost. I don't need your sass, okay? Okay. Great kid. She really is. She really is. How about you? Are you stretching yourself too thin? Nah, my breakdown's a ways off yet. I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll just put it on the, the whiteboard. <laughs> uh, mine was in my jeans pocket it was in the second pocket I looked in out of a total possible four he starts to pack a bowl Grace we didn't get to your part of the meeting I'm sorry fine it'll keep until tomorrow how is it going your side of things good finally in that flow state you know I actually love when the clock starts ticking it makes it all real finally good if you want, I can write a script to automate the interval readings for you. What do you mean? For the strand drift? I can throw together something to track all the passive scans and just trim out the delta so you don't have to calculate the modal variance manually. Wait, for like the quaternary spreads? Sure. Or map to the imaginaries or the Q coordinates, whichever. What? You know all the math? Well, not like all of it, but... Sure, what do you think I do? Programming's all based in math. Heck, everything comes down to math if you boil it down enough. Oh my gosh, you are one of us. Yeah. I am, did you not know that? Oh, no, I didn't mean it as like a What did you think thing. I was here for? I just meant that I didn't know oh, that you- feel smarter? <laughs> no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I know that's not what you meant. Let's just forget about it. Grace. You know what? It's actually fine. I'm just gonna... I'm not actually feeling the whole... I'm gonna go do a new natal chart. Yep, just gotta run a new... Um... And you know what else? I'm gonna look over my code for a bit. Polish it up. Show you guys tomorrow what I've... You know, what I've been to the, the scope of, yeah. You know, and I think I'm going to rig this whole house up for Ethernet. We should have that. I'm going to do that because that is a thing. That is one of the many things I can do. From off, we hear Cubs, my chinchilla, start to play. A natal chart? Is she pregnant? No, it's an astrology thing. Don't worry, I thought the exact same thing. Okay. I, I didn't mean it like that. I know. Don't sweat it. This is, it's just a weird night. She'll be okay. It has been a weird night. I just feel so, the look on her face. Hey, is... shh. Don't get yourself in knots. Grace is prickly and she's proud. She won't take kindly to you getting all worked up about it. If you want to make sure there's no hard feelings, just replenish our bucket of Slim Tims. <laughs> Snap. She loves those. <laughs> I'll do that. You're so smart. Wait, you already know that I think you're crazy I smart, I know. Right? Don't worry. You told me. And did I tell you that you're amazing and thoughtful? And I'm sorry that you've had to take care of all of us when we all picked the same night to be neurotic and you're the one with the headache. No, the headache's long gone. I'm just tired. <sighs> Man. <laughs> I'm so tired. Social confrontations make my heart race and then they make my face flush. And then after the adrenaline or whatever fades, I'm just. <gasps> she lays her head on Catherine's shoulder. I'm socked. Yeah. Yeah. Catherine looks down at Jay, then lays her head on top of Jay's. She gazes out at nothing for a moment, then closes her own eyes. You're so great. Yeah, I wish now. They sit there like that in warm silence. Act one, scene six. 
dance music. Transition, time passes, lights up on Michelle on stage with the machine. It has grown again and is large and ornate. Everything's hooked up and it's finally complete. Michelle crouches, staring at it. Done to fix that, did, yes, there's, oh, hey. Hey, Thren. I was just going over everything and Michelle, I think I'm good. I know. I've run and rerun the stress test on that coolant thing and Grace's fixes work like magic. I've been trying to think if there's any better configuration for those coils we were talking about, but I really think they're perfect the way they are and I don't want to fix what ain't broke. You swapped out that tuning relay. Yesterday, uh, day before actually. I've done soft runs on every sequence. I've gone over every nut and bolt. <laughs> I really think- It's ready. Yeah. We're ready. I think we are. I mean, Jay's got a couple of things she wanted to math out some more, but I don't think that's anything that would- Hey, Jay, Grace, could you come here, please? Joe. Yes. Are we really ready? <laughs> Do they belong to the same universe? only for crossover specials. All the Sentai teams are kind of overlappy and every once in a while they work together with a, a Cayman Rider to find a robot samurai cyber demon emperor. But is it like the Avengers or the X-Men or like the Exiles? I don't know, nerd. Well, then how does Ultraman fit into all of this? Uh, we will need to actually build a four real time machine for me to have long enough to explain that whole, holy shit. Look at that. What's up? We, uh, I was just telling Michelle that I think we're, I'm all done on my end, but didn't you still have some numbers you wanted to go over? Oh yeah, but that wasn't for this. This was just for fun. Fun. You were doing some other highest order math for fun? Yeah, the Cornelison problem is a, well, anyway, I'm good. My stuff's been done for days. Then Grace, do you still have? I'm still. Not 100% happy with the name. I really think the dream engine deserves another vote. Put all the code. If I may just dip my pinky toe into the pool of immodesty, which is of course my only vice. The code is an opus magnum of programming, like just Citizen Kane for hackers. Beautiful, clean data structures and tight, tight scripts. I cannot oversell the tightness of these scripts, y'all. Oh, I even put in a screensaver, did you see it? It's Heathcliff, everyone's favorite orange comic strip cat. <laughs> then, oh my God, Michelle, are we? It's ready. <laughs> Wait, what? Hell yeah. What? Michelle. It's ready. You did it. You did it. Bob. Yep, we did it. We all did it. Holy crap, I can't <laughs> believe it's finally ready. I am freaking out a little, you guys. You count all you want, baby. This thing is live, live, live. Wait, is it? Can we turn it on? Catherine goes over to a section of the machine and presses a button. The machine starts making a sound. Oh my God. Grace runs to her computer and punches some keys. Someday we'll know by the new radicals blares. We... We need to celebrate. There's alcoholic beverages. Michelle. <laughs> we did it. Let's get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very big moment for me. Michelle <laughs> goes to get beers. Jay gets up to help her, but sees Catherine holding out her hand. Catherine and Jay dance together. Grace watches them for a moment, kind of smug, kind of sad, kind of happy. She turns up the music and sings along and is taken aback when Catherine runs over and pulls her into the dancing. Michelle slides a cooler into the room and they all let out a whoop. Michelle hands out beers and because wonders never cease, pops the cap off and drinks from her bottle first. What is happening? Byron enters, dancing off beat. The others stare at him. Grace turns the music down. Oh, hey ladies. Byron, why are you here? <laughs> it's Friday. You guys always get Chinese food on Fridays. Judy said you guys didn't phone in an order, but I figured you just forgot. It's Friday? I knew it. Where's the food, Byron? Oh, this is in the Jeep. You want to maybe bring it inside? Oh, yeah. Byron. Hmm? She holds out a beer. You want one? Oh, that 
is so nice, but no, thank you. I drove and that would not be good on top of the uppers and everything else I took earlier. Byron exits to get the food and they look at one another and burst out laughing before Grace turns the music back up and they start dancing again. Act one, scene seven, not tub time machine. Time passes, music quiets, shifts to Nirvana's heart-shaped box. The hoppers are flushed from drink and dancing and are sprawled out on the couch and floor. A few empty bottles and Chinese takeout boxes are scattered about. Jay runs her fingers through Catherine's hair. You guys are gonna come too, right? Totally, dude. You get the hot tub going and we'll all join you in just a second. <laughs> Very tight. Yeah, we're definitely all changing into bikinis right now. See you soon, dude. Who is this? It's a, uh... oh shoot, who is this? I know it, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know who this is. Ugh. Who? It's Kurt Cobain. Yes. Thank you. There's another Kurt Cobain? Nope. Wait, what? This is his band from the 90s, before his girlfriend OD'd and he turned all mega Christian. No. Yep. I really liked her music too. Courtney something. They were super grungy. Courtney Love. They were from Seattle. And they defined <laughs> grunge. Kurt Cobain with the vests? I like the song. <laughs> it rules. God, that could have been something. Jay stands and takes Catherine's hand, tilts her hand, head a little, pulls Catherine to her sheet. They casually, slowly, and then not slowly exit, hand in hand. About time. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Come on. Wait, what's that thing Catherine said? Whist. Whist now. <laughs> I will not whist. You were the big unknown. I'd never met you. I'd never studied silicon anything. It was the big gap in my knowledge and there wasn't time for me to learn any of it. But you came through. You came through big. I want you to know that. Thank you. Um, You're very welcome. It was, it's been an honor. Likewise. Oh. I don't know how I'll get to sleep tonight. <laughs> right? I'm wired. My brain is never going to shut up now that... I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> look at her. Yes. You know, maybe we don't have to... What? Try to sleep. Maybe I'm... it's ready, right? Well, yes, if but... You're ready, right? <laughs> Well, we are, but no. I mean, we should stick to the schedule. We'll be well rested. We'll be sober. <laughs> we can back up all the documentation, finish any cleanup, do a final systems check. There are entire checklists of last minute. <sighs> Go get the others. Yes! <laughs> Lovebirds, get out here! Now is not the time for bits, Gracie. Michelle says you guys got to come I mean it, hurry. Oh, hurt. Grace grins, runs to her computer, turns off the music. She clears bottles and boxes away from the machine. Jay and Catherine enter, only a little disheveled. Jay grins at them and runs to the machine's interface where she starts punching buttons. What was so important that it couldn't wait until tomorrow? We're going tonight, now. What do you mean we're <laughs> oh my god, we're doing this? Joke them if you got them, babes. You're joking. Michelle. Catherine, it's time. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Grace, where are we at? Numbers are right where they're supposed to be. Full charge, all lights green across the board. <laughs> Ladies, stand on your marks like we practiced. Grace, lock in the coordinates. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, let's, oh, good Lord, I almost forgot. One second, I'll be right back. Michelle dashes off stage. Grace flips a switch and types some more commands. Jay and Catherine go to their spots in front of the machine. Catherine takes Jay's hand. Jay squeezes back reassuringly and extends her other hand to Grace, who finishes what she's doing, goes to her spot and takes Jay's hand. Michelle! Michelle! I'm coming! 
She enters holding a Walkman. Are we ready? Yes. Catherine? Oh God, I guess, yes. <laughs> Grace? Let's do this thing. Wonderful. Will you hold this for me? Hands the Walkman to Grace, goes up to the machine's interface. Thank you, ladies. Presses a button, a low hum starts. This has been the greatest experience of my career and of my life. The hum builds. Then I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I am so, so sorry. Michelle pushes a button, blackout, a series of terrible rending sounds, some mechanical, some ethereal, house lights up for intermission.
Act Two, Scene One, Every Me and Every You. Lights up on chaos. The cabin is gone, replaced by the suggestion of trees at the edges of the playing space. The machine lies in pieces, scattered somewhat from center as though by an explosion. Catherine J and Grace have been flung to the floor and are dazed, bruised, and utterly disoriented. Sorry for what? <laughs> Oh my, what 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 it happened? Jesus! Holy shit! Son of a bitch! What is? Did it work? The next one we build is gonna come with some helmets and goddamn knee pads. Did it work? Catherine hisses in pain. Grace eases up to sitting. Jay scrambles to her feet, stumbles, and almost falls. Did it? Did we do it right? Did we, Michelle? Michelle! Grace rises gingerly, moves to help Catherine to her feet as Jay stumbles around frantically looking for Michelle. Michelle! Michelle! She must have been thrown farther from us. We have to go and look for her. Hang on. We got it, Michelle! Jay, stop, stop, wait. Uh, but she wait might a be hurt, she might be some- I know, I know, but wait, just wait a- Ugh. Catherine grimaces but finally stands. Jay finally notices her state and rushes over to her. Catherine leans on Jay. Look around. We're not in Kansas anymore. They take it in. The sound is odd, quieter than a forest should be, but layered almost like the ocean with different soundscapes rising and receding in different directions. It worked. Wait, where did... Grace goes back to where she landed and picks up Michelle's Walkman. But where is she? Grace presses play. What are you doing? Some goddamn answers. Hello, Grace, Catherine, Jay. Congratulations, we did it. We've shared so much these last few months, but more than anything in the world, I wish I could be there with you for this moment. There are things I wish I could have shared with you sooner, but I couldn't. The work was too great. It was greater than me or any of my tiny human problems. Still, it would have been nice as we grew closer, and I realized that instead of a competent group of acquaintances, I had in fact found a brilliant family of scientists. It would have been nice to have talked to you all more openly, to let you see my mistakes, my humanity, my pain. As I record this, there is cancer all throughout my body. It has spread beyond any possible hope of treatment or cure. When I discovered it, there was still a chance. There was still time to fight it, but I, I have never been afraid of dying. I was afraid of not finishing my life's work. I was afraid of needles and bitter pills and mind fog. I was afraid of uncertainty. I was afraid of being too nauseous to calculate fractals, too weak to calibrate an instrument. I was afraid to confide in anyone or let anyone try to take care of me or tell me I had to accept treatment or slow down. I was, in retrospect, afraid of a great many foolish, cowardly things. And so I counted out my months and days. I sent letters and emails and made phone calls and I got the three people I knew could finish my legacy project to put their lives on hold and join me in an old cabin miles away from anyone or anything. And then I kept them at arm's length. I wasted time and energy keeping them from finding out my secret. It was my first great mistake. And had I not done that, perhaps I would not have made the second one. The Octavia works. Congratulations, Hoppers. We did it. But I should have shared everything with you. Jay, you were right that day in June. When you showed me the error I'd made, I should never have lashed out at you because you weren't wrong. I was. I realized in that horrible moment that the machine would work, but not as we'd hoped. Additive strand drift could mean only one thing. The probable space between timelines is not fixed. That's what you showed me. The strands do not stay in place. Our machine would be able to exit our own strand but navigation would be beyond our abilities. I was faced with the prospect of having to start the machine over from scratch. It would have set us back months, if not years. I don't know whether I still have weeks left or just days. I determined how to keep the design of the Octavia, but change the function. I am sorry for betraying the trust you've placed in me. 
Your friendship has made these last few months some of the best times of my entire life. I don't dare hope for your forgiveness, but I do pray that you will take the opportunity I offer you now. The most recent adjustments I gave to Grace and Catherine have reconfigured the machine to contract the probability space, creating a nexus where all possible timelines can interact. In essence, I've created a great wave crashing down upon a rock, and in that tide, all our little isolated worlds will mingle. You can still find your better chances. Operating the machine was a small price for me to pay. As I said, I'm not afraid of dying. There are two last things I need you to know. Firstly, I truly could not have done this without you. You did everything I could ever have asked for and so much more. Secondly, and this is crucial, the collapse of the field will resume. The recording winds down and dies. They stare at it, stunned. Grace presses some buttons, fiddles with the volume, but nothing happens. Son of a bitch. Is it the batteries? Shit, probably, I don't know. Hardware is not my goddamn department. Grace. This is just unbelievable. You know what? <laughs> it's perfect. Like, it's actually perfect. Like, I discover this cool, cool person, spend all this time idolizing her, and then I have to meet these total strangers and live with them, and then once I figure out that the strangers are actually okay, the idol does a primetime pay-per-view season finale heel turn. That's Shakespeare. That's freaking Star Wars. Five stars, two thumbs, way up. Jesus Christ, when I get my hands on her. She's gone. Unbelievable. I mean, where does she get off, Grace? Dude. If she ran the machine and she collapsed the field, she's gone. I know. Okay? I know. Damn it. She... She was my hero. I know. Mine too. And she was... Our friend. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I get it. Right? I mean, I'm still mad, but I... Damn. Freaking damn, I get it. I sure as hell don't. Catherine. No, I'm sorry. No, this is bullshit. This is a load of total bullshit. She should have told us. She knew for how long? What other mistakes did she make, huh? I guess we'll never know since we don't get to ask her. She made sure of that. Jesus, Kath. Oh. No, don't Kath me. I don't know how you got over that so quickly when she lied to us. She lied to us and didn't stick around to face the consequences. She just, what, what, what'd she do? Sit up one night across the goddamn hallway from me and write her letters, a little speech, her I'm sorry, her a family, her congratulations and then came downstairs and lied to our faces. And do not interrupt me. She put all of our lives in danger. How dare she be so arrogant? How dare she? How dare she take the easy way out? I don't think it was easy. There was a harder way and she didn't take it. You do the math. Don't yell at me. Hello? Oh, oh my God. Jesus. She, <laughs> holy shit. Michelle, too, enters. She's dressed not terribly different from Michelle, but a bit more comfortably. She's also wearing a cap that completely covers her scalp. Is anyone... Oh, hello there. <laughs> Thank God, dude. You scared me so much. Don't ever do that again. Do you ladies need any uh, help? What? What are, what are you... Sorry. Sorry. We're um, just a little bit lost. Hi. I'm Jay. Jay, what are you doing? Uh, this is Thryn and Grace, and you are? Oh, my name's Michelle. I, I was taking a walk and thought I heard some shouting. I just wanted to check it out and make sure no one was, you know. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Is everyone all right here? Yes, thank you. We just got a little bit lost, freaked out a little, but we're okay now. You know, it's the funniest thing, but I thought I heard someone calling my name. Oh, really? That's so strange. Do you live around here, Michelle? 
Oh, yes, just a little ways from here. I'm a writer. This is where I come when I'm on deadline. Really? Indeed. I've got a little cabin. I used to live around here, actually, but there was a fire back in, oh, must have been the 80s. When I sold my first book, I decided to come back and buy the picture-perfect author cottage. I bet. You write. Would I know any of your work? Oh, I don't think so. I write mainly for children. Well, perhaps you've... Uh, the uh, Arithmancer? Uh, the Crown of Moons trilogy? No? <laughs> well, as I said, younger audiences. Although, if you're looking for Christmas presents for a young lady who likes math and science and fantasy, I happen to think my books make pretty good gifts. That's, that's really amazing. Thank you. That's so nice of you to say. I've been at it for quite a long time, and it's nice to finally start being able to call myself a real writer. <laughs> Listen to me go on and on. I'm sorry if I'm bo boring anyone. You've only just met me, and I'm... It's just that I've been cooped up by myself, chained to the old writing desk, filling up with unspoken thoughts, so apologies. Could I ask you a, a weird question? Um, yes. Sorry, you don't have to answer if you don't. But how far into a... She gestures at Michelle Tu's cap. Ah, uh, my treatment. Yes, I had a friend who... This is my last month of it. Wrapped up the actual chemo itself last week, thank God. <laughs> I don't know if tasting flavors properly will ever come back, but Lord, I hope so. <laughs> Things were pretty frightening when I was diagnosed, but I thought I finally broke into the industry, finally quit the agency. I survived marriage counseling. I am not going out without a fight. My husband and my friends, <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better support system. So not out of the woods yet, but damned if I'm going to stop writing and damned if I'm going to spend the time I do have living in fear. <laughs> Was, well, did your friend? She, she was all right in the end. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Listen, I have to get back to my... I put the kettle on before I left. Don't want to burn another house down. <laughs> Do any of you need to use a phone or... Thank you. We... Uh, I think our ride is in the other direction, uh, but it was really nice to meet you, Michelle. Totally. I really hope some of the other yous wrote those books too. They sound awesome. I'm sorry? Nothing. Thanks for being brave and checking to see if we were being attacked. I'm not sure I would have. Uh, sure, of, of, of course. Well, it was n nice to meet you all. Stay, stay safe. Okay. No, I'm not. But I'm a little better now. Yeah. Jay, I'm sorry for- No, I get it. Don't worry. How are you holding up? I'm having a hard time coming up with a fun metaphor for how weird this is, because this is kind of an entirely new level of crazy. But if Catherine's done roid raging, do we want to try to piece together the machine again? I mean, it looks totaled, but I don't really have any other time machines to compare it to, so maybe it's actually fine. I don't, I don't have my tools. I don't know what all changes Mich our Michelle made. It's uh, it is maybe stuck to the original launch plan, huh? God, I don't even know where to start. I can't even tell if it's all of it's there, if it's just pieces scattered farther away or floating through some timeline where my twin absorbed me in the womb and I went into finance. No, but there's- a... Oh, crap. I didn't even bring my snack bandolier. I wasted so much of your time convincing you that that was a necessary part of the machine. Guys, we don't need to put it back together. But according to Michelle's tape, we're not in any timeline. So we need to figure out a way to move towards- Okay, well, according to me, the machine can't help us do that, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you guys were just, listen, Michelle and the machine, with Miss Michelle said the machine was never going to be able to move us anywhere. Whatever she did behind our backs didn't change that. I think that she used the Octavia to break, well, uh, kind of everything. That's all it was good for. Less of a time machine and more of a... Than a time bomb. Yes. So I think that this place isn't really a place. It's an overlap. It's where all of the world's... Byron, too, enters. He's dressed casually, but like a rich, cool person dresses casually. 
make of that what you will. Touch. Absolutely not. Oh. Oh, good evening. Hi there, we're lost. Yes, I, I can see that. Well, then maybe you can help us find our way back to... <laughs> off of my mountain? Yes, off, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, did you just say your mountain? Yes, my... Wait, do you really not... <laughs> you truly don't ken where you are, do you? You don't ken who I am. No, dude, we don't ken any of that. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. Did you just say dude? <laughs> what are you, time travelers from the 194th decade? No, we're not that, nor are we from any other decade but this one. We're nuns, Grace. Nuns? Yes. I am so... So sorry if I offended you. We forgive you. I should have realized your rustic manner of speech, your homely clothing, your simple trusting way, but how did you happen to stumble onto my estate? We, we are on a holy rockabout, kind of a leave the nest, you know, check out what's out there, report back, wise in the ways of the world situation. I see. That's fascinating. Unless we can convince a mortal man to marry us before the sun sets on the third race. Uh, our bus broke down. We, we wandered off from the main group. Walk, 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 yada, yada, yada. Sorry for trespassing. You're the first um, outsider we've ever encountered. Can you tell us about what we've been missing out on? Who are you? What's your deal? <laughs> Certainly. My name is Byron. Welcome to my mountain. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. That's someone who invests in big ideas. It's kind of what this area, Silicon Lake, is famous for, but uh, I'm the best at it. Wow. Let's hear him out. I made my fortune in modular phones just as the ARPANET was getting big. I invested early in Microsoft and Gentechi dabbled in solar-powered mass transit, and then I founded a little company called Ultramarine. Seriously? Nothing. You don't ken Ultramarine. I'm sorry? No, 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 no. This is just... Wow. I didn't think there was anyone left on the planet who didn't ken Ultramarine. It's kind of refreshing. Humbling, too. What'd you do? Solve world hunger? Yes. What? Yeah. The second agricultural revolution, hydroponics, automated cultivators and harvesters, vertical ocean farming sustained by geothermal energy, mass produced desalination plants and UN subsidized anti-scarcity distribution centers. It was a lot of moving pieces, but there are worse ways to spend your 20s. Holy crap. Is that your deity? No, uh, sorry, but how did you manage to turn geothermal into a viable energy source? The Eveleth Corollary pretty much guarantees that energy retrieval breaks down at about 28%, so unless you were able to... Actually, that's the uh, Balt Corollary, and... Uh, wait, how do you ken that stuff? What kind of nuns are you? Uh, we believe in Scientology. No, hun, that's real. Scientarian. Work. Scientarian, yes. Uh, duh. Sorry, that's that's what we are. Hail science. Okay. So, what did you do next? Well, I mean, after I solved world hunger, I pretty much retired. I uh, patented a lot of the ultramarine tech, so my percentage of that is, you know, after a certain point, money just doesn't matter. You can really don't i've been musing lately about lunar colonies like something challenging but still groovy and prestigious it might be nice to live up in the sky i think we can get there by the 203rd decade well sure but how does that help the people down here well i i already did that wow byron what's the political landscape like since we're you know 
nuns, pure, innocent brides of- Science. Yes, thank you, Jay. Since we're cloistered away from society, we're totally conveniently ignorant. Who's the president? Who are your elected officials? Yeah, how fair is the justice system in this timeline scale of one to eight? Uh, well, the algorithms handle all of that. There hasn't actually been an American president since, um, what's his name? Algorithms. Yes, they're extremely complex computer yes, programs. I know what an algorithm is. You can't tell me to push this. You're on my mountain. Oh, so you don't have dude or no, but you have whist? Terrific. So who created these algorithms? Do the people vote for them to replace the government? Are they fair or do they reflect the biases of their creators? I don't, I, it's not as simple as, I mean, <laughs> they're fine. You can, everything's fine. You, no one goes hungry and we don't have to worry about elections and stuff and you can code whatever you want as long as you can afford the proper licenses and 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 and, and everyone gets the right amount of free speech <laughs> you i think you i think we're finished here i i think you should get off my land i think you should make us i i, I will i'm i'm going to i'll be back and when i am You'd better have run back to your weird nunnage or whatever it is because I'll have my K-90s with me. Uh, a K-90 is a sort of a robot. Get out of here, Byron. It's my land. What an absolute dream. He made me miss our Byron. And for that, I can never forgive him. <laughs> well, should we stop with all these ghosts of Christmas alternate present? Uh one of these timelines has to have the good stuff without whatever that jackassery was. No, we should stay here. Why? I don't know that we'll be able to find our way back. Isn't this place a fixed point everywhere? That was what our Michelle, Michelle one seemed to be saying, but I don't know if it touches all the realities at the same time. How come we're not surrounded by Michelle's? Why weren't Byron two and Michelle two from the same strand? Will Byron, too, even be able to find his way back? Better not. Well, I think we should stick together. For how long? Wait, what do you mean? Jay. Come on, we're here. We, we did it. Michelle lying. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, uh, of course it was. But this is our chance. This right here. And we can't let it slip through our fingers. Right? And since we've spent the last two months being real careful to not talk about our flight itinerary, I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that we still want different things. Anyone wanna take that bet? So, uh, we can keep the band together a little bit longer, but eventually I'm leaving this weird ass mega zone and finding my goddamn promised land, promised time, whatever. Why well, wait then? Your mind's all made up, don't let us hold you back. You guys. You clearly don't see us as a team. Oh, I absolutely think you're a team. But let's not pretend that I was ever someone you wanted on it. Guys. You were always welcome. Guys. <laughs> Bullshit. You guys. Did you hear that? What? A rustle. They all draw in together. Kevin and Grace both instinctually building Jay. Grace takes the Walkman and holds it like a weapon. Who's there? Come out slowly with your hands up. No sudden movements. Hello? Michelle three enters, furative and feral in a way we've never seen this character. She moves cautiously, terrified and desperate. She's dressed somewhat post-apocalyptically in camo and combat armor, all ragged. What the shit? I I I'm unarmed, please. I'm, I'm just passing through. I don't want any trouble. Michelle, who are you? What, what, do, what do you mean? What's your name? Our names are forbidden. Uh-uh. Backpedal. Control Q. Please, he's after me. We have to go. It's not safe here. You have Wait, to- Who's after you? Uh, where are you from? I, I fled the fortress three nights ago. The steel hold sent in forces after me, but I set traps. They won't hurt anyone ever again. But he, he is tracking me. And if he catches me- If who catches you? He, him! The marshal of the steel hold! The man who butchered every child in the last free garden! The Baron. This is 100 consecutive yikes. Please, I just want to go home. She falls to her knees shaking and they all shrink away. Stupid, stupid. 
There is no going home. Where, where is home? Home is, it is the free gardens where we never saw the, the sun, but we were never hungry. Home is across the border where people are not hunted like rabbits. Home is a small cabin, just a shed, really blanketed in the snow where there's a kettle over a fire and someone who loved me. Gone now, all gone. Even, you, you won't understand this, but I came from another world, a, another reality. Another timeline. Yes, how could you? Wait, you're, I, I was a scientist where I come from. We can be scientists. And I, I met someone, someone brilliant, who helped me realize this wild, impossible idea I had. And we did it. Somehow we did it. We built the device and turned it on. And, and, and now I'm here and she's not. And I will never see her again. You're travelers too, aren't you? Like I was. I see that now. Go home, if you can find a way. You built the machine to travel between timelines, like the one we have? Well, ours was, it was, it, it, it was not like this. But it worked by tuning the frequencies between the entangled Eddington strands, right? Eddington? Yes, a strand, a timeline. No, oh, uh, 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 yes, uh, well, that was the basic. So you must have, we need to know, how stable is the field? What is the decay rate for the machine's wave particles? It's, it's based on the initial wave interval. The further you set the high end of it, is this making any sense? Yes, 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 the high end of the upper limit on the quantum spread. Yes, exactly. That's what determines. Hello? <gasps> what is it? One. It's him. You have to run. You have to. Oh, God. Michelle Three hesitates, but she hears another sound. She cries out and pushes past them to run off into the woods. Just got significantly less awesome. Hello? Est-ce que tu va bien? Jay, Grace, and Catherine gather together and brace themselves. Byron Three enters. Byron Three is, to put it bluntly, zaddy. He's calm and sharp and put together in a way no other Byron has been. It's a good look for him as are the exotic ranger jacket and the glasses and the slight accent. We are Americans and we are not afraid. <laughs> Americans, I, I'm sorry, I do not know that province. I can see you are not from around here. Are you in need of any assistance? What the hell? Okay, I don't think he's from the same timeline as that, Michelle. I'm sorry? No, I'm sorry. Um, we are travelers, obviously, yes, and we are, you know, lost. Um, could you tell us where we are? Uh, well, this is, you are in the Derblay Woods, a nature preserve. Did you know that? That's so. <laughs> Let me guess. You three were hiking the Great Cormorant Trail. Did you start in uh, Nouveau Arden or Galindo? Uh, Galindo? <laughs> yes, this happens. And uh, did you go east on the trailhead that said Lac de Grand Sam? Uh huh. It is a simple mistake, but uh, I'm sorry to tell you that you have gone very far out of your way. Vincennes is many kilometers back the way you came. You have strayed into Napoleon Prefecture, to the edge of the Grand Forest. This is the Grand Forest? Yes. Uh, it does not look like much here, does it? But the Grand Forest actually stretches all the way from Charlemagne Prefecture in Val Valois to Rochambeau in Malicorne. Which of the English provinces did you say you were from? America? Yes, yeah, we are from that province. And I'm sorry, kind, handsome stranger, who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm a ranger of this preserve. My name is Biron. I have served the prefecture for almost 10 years. I'm from De La Ferra originally, but I love my adopted home. What do you do in your spare time, Biron? Uh, well, I play uh, in your province. Do you have uh, hockey? Uh, yes, I, I play hockey. I am a goaltender, obviously. I cook. I like to read. Uh, I keep a small vegetable and herb garden. I hunt bears, mostly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is there... A madam, Mr. Uh, Biron. God, that's weird. Could you tell us where the nearest town is? Or <sighs> my friends, I, I'm sorry to say you are 
far indeed from anything so large as to be properly called a town. But if you should like, we can return to the ranger encampment and I can provide you with a, a hot meal and a safe respite from the elements. Tomorrow we can hold. Do you hear that? Oh God, what now? Please wait here a moment. Please stay together and do not move. Seriously, Grace? I'm sorry, but that is like an undeniably un hot Byron. He's a good Byron. Hello? Who are? Oh, my dear. Isn't this possible? Come on. Screams. Oh! The sound of silence. Oh! Oh! Swearing in French, a oh! high school oh! laughter, a choke gurgling, oh! and hacking and sawing sounds. <laughs> what? Byron Four enters. He looks like White Rufio, feral and clad in, I mean, basically the same style of clothing and palette as Michelle Three. He is covered in blood, and in one hand he holds a knife, while the other hand holds Byron Three's severed head by the hair. He looks at the hoppers, then back down at the head. The head is still wearing the, those glasses. He waggles it. Having such a weird day. Hi there. I've never seen you before. Wonder what you taste like. <laughs> oh my God, we are screwed. I'm looking for a naughty runaway. One of my women. <laughs> I haven't seen her, have you? Ask my friend here. He waggles the head again. But he is not very talkative you know <laughs> i haven't slept in a few days been running on chocolate cocaine bar and it's just kind of getting bored of tracking though i think maybe i could just bring anyone back and that'd be fine but the thing is already got a lot of mouths to feed only need one of you. So, which to bring back? Me, me, mine. Who are you? <laughs> you don't know me? Come on. I'm the Baron, maybe. And you, pretty girl, are coming with me. Byron drops the severed head and advances on Grace. As no one moves, he chuckles. He gets right in Grace's face and sniffs her. Yeah. Gonna have a lot of fun, you and me. Catherine sucker punches Byron poor. When he reacts, she lashes out with a kick to his hand and he drops the knife. Oh, like as hell not. You stupid. But the spell is broken. Grace shoves him and he falls. Jay stomps on his wrist. Catherine kicks him. Grace grabs a piece of the machine and with a cry, swings it down on him. Act two, scene two. Stay with me. Transition. A little time passes. Byron four's body is on stage with a smashed in head. Byron three's head is still somewhere nearby. Jay comforts a shaking Grace while Catherine lays out some pieces of the machine next to the Walkman, which now has a wire running out of it, looped around a bolt and then back into it. Breathe, just breathe, okay? I am, You're okay. I, I know, I know, yeah. That was messed up. It was messed all the way up. Holy crap. I can't believe I froze. How could I freeze? Well, we I, all did. It was, it's a natural response, but we got, it got through it. Be if Catherine had, Catherine, what are you doing? Thanks. Catherine winds a wire attached to a piece of the machine around a bowl. I'm tired of waiting for help or for any more freaky doppelgangers to waltz out of the woods. I'm getting to the bottom of this. How? Oh, searching with science. Catherine finishes winding the wire around the bolt, plugs it into part of the machine it came out of, and moves the bolts next to one another. The Walkman slowly starts back up. Catherine stops it and rewinds a bit would ever have asked of you and so much more. Secondly, and this is crucial, 
The collapse of the field will result in a gradual return to stasis, but until then, you will exist in a place outside and between the Eddington strands. The other timelines will essentially be entangled for a time, allowing you to move among them. After the interval decays and the field collapses, the strands will de-entangle, unentangle, and re-coalesce back along their prior coordinates. So make your decisions before that happens. I'm not sure how long that it will take exactly, but I, I only want to, I want you to have the bright futures that I cannot. Again, I'm sorry for everything. I am so proud of you and I, I love you all so much. Goodbye. The Walkman hisses and squeaks softly on blank tape. Catherine turns it off. Jay goes to the wreckage of the machine and sifts through it. Jay, Jay, what are you doing? I know, I know how to do this. Um, Michelle said that it was the initial wave interval. What are we going to do? We don't know how much time has passed. We don't know how much time is left. The Octavia had a way to measure coordinates, right? Sure, but I mean, aren't we in a place where coordinates are meaningless? Yeah. Yes, but I, I just need whatever it is that you use to measure them, please. What are you going to do? The motherboard's toast, and I have no input. I can't program anything. Please, can you just trust They're me? They're the little beige tubes capped in copper circles. Uh, should have a logo that looks kind of like a windmill. Catherine helps Jay look. After a moment, Grace joins them. Is this it? Let me, yes, that's it. I need one more. Oh, I saw one of those. She runs back to a pile, runs back. Here you go. What are you going to do? It's my turn to science. Jay connects the two tubes to a light, then hooks them up to the wires that Catherine used on the Walkman. Okay. Okay. So these both measure our coordinates, right? Okay. So normally hooking them both to their outputs, uh, uh, hooking both their outputs up to the diode at the same time would create a short circuit. But right now they're basically exporting random surges, hence the flickering. But at the, as the field decays, they'll both get less and less random. And so line up exactly on both sides and the circuit blows yep they stare at the flickering light which jay gently places on the ground as that gets brighter the tide goes out exactly well then what are we waiting for let's go um what jay look at that thing we've got to start looking i don't want us to get trapped or separated or i don't uh, guys listen i what if we should just stay what what the hell we've seen some of these other timelines and and is going to any of them really going to help fix our problems yes, yes. you're joking right i mean it is this does this feel right to either of you we're all just going to magically stumble into a timeline where we all get what we want and somehow michelle's there too and and so is my sister and then what are you excited to meet the other you now? The one who is already there? The one who has a right to her own sister? She's my sister too. But she's, no, she's not. Your Louise is gone and you have no idea what she might've grown up to be. And I never will unless we go. This is my one chance. I don't understand why you're, believe me. If we find ourselves in a time traveler's ethical quandary, I will learn to get the hell over it. Real goddamn fast. What exactly do you think the alternative is? That we stay here. Let the field collapse. We go home. We do our best to fix our own timeline instead of just abandoning it. Jay, there are problems that are too big for one person to solve, no matter how brilliant. There are entire institutions, systems, within systems of corruption and injustice. Do you understand me? The world isn't bad because one person isn't trying hard enough. The world is bad and there's a hole in the ozone layer and we have disease and poverty and war after war after war because a lot of people for a long time have collectively decided to not care. And you think that's just our timeline? Jay. I've made my decision. I'm not asking you to. Yes. Yes, I am. Please. Please stay. I care. 
I care about you so much. You're so important to me. And I just... Well, I'll make this easier for the two of you. Pick a number. What? Come on, Pisces, pick a number. No one? Man, I wish I had my Yarrow stocks. She points, spins. Seven. How auspicious. Okay, bye. So you're just going to leave just like Michelle did? Stop. Stop it. Just listen. Please. This isn't about me. This isn't about how I'm feeling like I'm not a part of the team or anything. That was... The summer has been great. Too great. Because I really didn't think I was going to like any of you. (laughs) No offense. I prefer it that way. That's how I live. That's how I like to live. But now we're here and we're in like the highest stake situation in the entire multiverse. And this is, it's a very unexpected, unwelcome part of me that wants to stay to tie myself to you and the choice or choices you're about to make. And it's scares me. It's not for me. So I got to go. Grace. (laughs) You're a good friend. You both are, really. That's just not my life. Good luck. The light grows a bit brighter and the edges of the stage a little darker. It's one of your choose your own adventure books. Every page, every choice, all at once. We can see all the inflection points. We can pick our ending. I, no. Then why are you walking away from happiness? Because cheating won't make me happy. Because I I thought that I was ready to just sneak out the back door. No goodbyes, no looking back. I got caught up in the story. But this isn't a book. This is real. And those are real people we are leaving behind. And the yous in the other timelines are real people too. Running away isn't how I want to change the world. We can go somewhere where people will respect your work. Where you won't get passed over for every single opportunity your whole life. Somewhere where you can walk alone at night, somewhere with laws that actually help people, where you can hold my hand on the train. You will spend the rest of your life wondering about the timeline you could have had. If I go with you, I will spend the rest of my life wondering exactly that about the timeline I left behind. We built a machine that broke time. We changed physics. We changed everything and we can change it again. Grace abruptly re-enters from the same direction she left in. Seven sucks. Gonna try three. She exits in a different direction. I was... I was so angry when we heard that tape. I know. I thought that Michelle... That I knew her. That I had, by working day and night, by throwing myself, throwing everything I had into the work, that I had finally finally earned her trust that she would finally see me as and then feeling so stupid so so unworthy but it it wasn't even just that god it wasn't even just the betrayal the lying it was that a decision had been made for me you know I would have been plenty upset if she'd used us and gotten us to build the Octavia and then said, so long suckers and ran off on it all on her own. But yeah, but when she decided that she knew best and we didn't get to know because if we knew we might choose differently, we might choose wrong. Like I was a child. That, that was the real betrayal. She made me powerless. I have spent so much of my life feeling powerless being powerless. I don't have an answer to that. I don't know if there are other timelines where you won't be made to feel powerless, but you're right. Our timeline is going to be that way a lot every day with our busted planet and our dirtbag species. Every day will be a struggle against that feeling. All I can promise you is that I will never be the one to make you feel that way. You know that's what you're doing to me right now. I'm not trying to. 
I'm sorry. If you have to go, go. I'll understand. I do. I do have to. I'm sorry. Catherine turns and without looking back, exits. The light glows a little brighter. The edges of the stage close in. Jay falls to her knees and weeps. After a few long seconds, Grace enters from the same direction she last left in. Not quite. Let's try. Oh, shit. Uh, Kath. Grace, I am. Damn, kid. No, I'm. I'm, uh. You didn't change your mind, did you? No. Again, I'm. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just passing through. Just a heads up, we lose World War II pretty often, like almost every time. So at least our timeline had that going for it. So, you know, if you really are committed to this, which I guess you are, then my computer has all of it. The work we did, everything backed up. Whatever you do next, it's a start. Grace. Thank you. The uh, password is friends. I know. I know. <laughs> the show's not as good as it used to be, but it is must-see TV, so I must see it. It's my, uh, it's my only vice. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. Multiverse says, let's try 12. Byron, let's go. Byron 5 enters. He looks unlike any of the other ones. Uh, I'm coming. I... Hi there. I'm Byron. What are you? Go, dude. Oh, sure. Um, it was nice meeting you. Byron 5 exits in the direction that Grace indicates. Hey. You're going to be OK. Yo, bye, let's go. Byron Six enters. Jay raises an eyebrow, and Grace grins and exits with him. So the light grows brighter. The playing space shrinks further. Michelle Four enters. She looks close to Michelle, but just so slightly off. Jay? M Michelle? Jay, thank God. I thought I'd... Oh, you're... You're not my Jay, are you? No. I thought I'd finally... What strand are you from? We... Gosh, that's weird. We're usually the ones who ask. Um, anyway, in my timeline, you recruited me and your friend Catherine. And Grace? Yeah. Fascinating. We must be from very close strands. Hmm. I'm trying to find... The um, me? From your strand? Yes. What about Grace and... Oh, well, when you found the error in my calculations and I told you all that the Octavia would work differently than we'd planned, Catherine and Grace, they dropped out. I don't... I don't blame them at all. The risks were... Why do you ask? In your timeline, did they decide to stay? Catherine wanted so badly for you to be together. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing. I just... I miss her. I miss them, both of them. I do too. But we finished the Octavia together, just you and I. And then you, uh, well, that is my... Yeah. You wanted to be the one to activate the machine. So I turned it on, not you. Precisely. But I'm, I'm going to find you, whatever it takes. I've searched, I've rebuilt the... Uh, did you tell me about the cancer? I looked up to you. So much. And I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I met you. 
I met a you that had started treatment, you know, and she was doing okay. You still can if you want. You could still try. I'm going back to my own timeline and there's no, well, you wouldn't be replacing anyone. I, thank you, but I can't. Okay. I have to find my other, my... Yeah, I know. Um, good luck. You too. She points to a part of the machine. Uh, do you mind if I take that? I keep rebuilding the Octavia to buy more time. Please, go ahead. Thank you. In case I never get the chance to say this to... Goodbye, Jay. You were better than I deserved. I know. Goodbye, Michelle. Michelle Four exits. The light grows brighter, the darkness creeps in. Jay watches it close in. It's barely any space at all anymore. The light starts to fade. She closes her eyes into the last of the shrinking, fading light. We hear Catherine's voice. Jay! Catherine? Jay, where are you? I'm here! Where are you? I'm here! The light flares. It grows brighter as the stage shrinks even further. Catherine runs into the last section of light, but Jay shrinks back. I'm... No, wait, please, I can't. I please, I know that you're not her. Jay, it's me. I'm not a. I mean, it's, you're it's not me. mine. You're from a different. Jay, place. Jay, honey, it's me. I promise. Uh, I ate the last hot pocket on Tuesday. You picked my nail polish color. We killed that Eve of Byron together. It's me. Corinne? Jay throws her arms around Catherine, who holds her. Hey. Look, I'm sorry I left. I'm sorry. There's no timeline where I don't see Louise. And there's no timeline where I don't come back to you. You could have found the other me. I don't want any other you. But you're, Thryn, you're right about everything. And one person can't change everything. There's two of us. That's plenty. And we'll find more. But it'll still be the same. He's still going to be the president. And our planet is still melting. And it's still going to be terrible. And every day is going to be hard. And I don't even know if this is going to work or if we'll be yeah, lost. Yeah, yes, I know, forever. I know. But you'll be there. So I guess I'll be there too. Because you were right, Jay. I don't want to take the easy way out. I want to try. Hey, um, listen. I know this is the worst time to ask because it looks like we're about to either go home or get lost in an eternal void outside of time, but do you want to get coffee sometime or dinner or? Sure, and I'd also like to move in with you. <laughs> they hold on to each other as the light shrinks to just enough space for them to stand in. Are we ready for this? Doesn't matter. They can't. It's a nice case. The light brightens and shrinks and then winks out. Play that curtain music because it's end of play. <laughs>